what's good everybody it's your boy Malcolm and I am back for another video and in today's video we are going to be talking about the new X-Men 97 series that just came back after I don't know how many years let's get into it all right so before we get into this review I need to tell you guys something I never watched the original X-Men 97 series I'm gonna be real I had never even heard of it until very recently when they said they're coming back with this reboot all that look I'm 25 years old I was born in 1998 it really wouldn't have made much sense for me to watch the X-Men 97 series. I was one year old. It just wasn't for me, right? But that's not to say I didn't watch X-Men growing up as a kid. Because I did watch X-Men Evolution, which I feel is the best X-Men series out. That shit was some absolute fire. If you haven't watched X-Men Evolutions, go check that shit out. I didn't even have cable and I was watching X-Men Evolutions. I used to go to the library and pick up the DVDs and bring the DVDs home and play them because I didn't even have cable. Go watch it. I'm telling you, if you haven't watched it, you would enjoy it. Go watch that shit. That shit is some flames. I also watched those live action X-Men movies that were coming out around that time. Those were absolutely bangers. Like, I loved superhero movies in the early 2000s, and that, those were some of the best ones. I say all that to tell you, even though I didn't watch the original X-Men 97, I do have a little background in X-Men. Like, I know about the X-Men. I got some background knowledge when it comes to that. So, here goes my review. But before we get into that, make sure to like, share, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff. I'm taking YouTube very serious. I decided I'm going to become a YouTube partner by the end of April. So y'all help would mean a ton. Make sure y'all rocking with the stuff. Turn the post notifications on so you can watch all my new videos. I'm about to be dropping a ton of YouTube videos for y'all this month. And I'm going to set a like goal for this video. If we can get 50 likes on this video, I'll post three videos on YouTube this week. And I'm going on vacation, so that's going to be hard, but I'm going to make it happen. All right, first and foremost, before I talk about anything regarding this X-Men 97 series, I have an apology to make. I would like to take this time to humbly apologize to Scott Summers, a.k.a. Cy Cyclops for all the disrespect I have put on his name over these last couple years. The only background knowledge I have of Scott Summers has been from the X-Men movies and from X-Men Evolutions and he's cool. He was all right in there. I did not know that you were the demon that you are. I would love to apologize to you. You're the fucking goat. Because every time I talk about X-Men, I'm always talking about all the other ones. I'm never talking about Cyclops because to me, Cyclops was never really lit like that. Hell no. In this series, he was lit like that. First scene, they're in the warehouse getting on them dudes who was selling the Sentinels. And Cyclops is in that bitch going dumb. I'm talking boom, 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 boom. And I've never seen him use his beams for mobility the way he was. Like he's using it to slide and shoot and do different shit like he was going absolutely bonkers. I did not know that he was a demon. Like, why didn't y'all tell me that Cyclops was lit? And not only that, but every time I see Cyclops, he's like the stick in the mud, annoying dude. In this one, he's literally bantering. He's making jokes. He's going cr like, I'm rocking with this Cyclops. Is this is what Cyclops is like in the comics? Let me know which comic to pick up because I'm a Cyclops fan. And then take it a step further, his character also has a lot of depth, which I absolutely love. Because Professor X isn't here anymore, so it's up to Cyclops to lead the team. And it seems like he's really struggling with how to deal with Professor X not being here, how to deal with leadership, how to deal with his relationship. But he's still trying to persevere through it all, so he has a lot of depth in his character, which I like a lot. Like, this is... This is what I would have loved to have seen from Cyclops and all the other renditions I've seen. But apparently, he's always been like this. So I love it. I think that is... Cyclops is probably my favorite character as of right now in the series. Okay, speaking of Professor X, I got some questions. I need y'all to let me know. Do I need to go back and watch the original X-Men 97 to understand what's going on here? Or can I just look up a brief synopsis and be okay with that? Because I don't know. Who killed Professor X? How did they kill Professor X? I mean, I guess I know why they would have killed Professor X. Because, you know, he's kind of like the leader of the X-Men. But, like, I, I, I just... I don't know. That's, that's a huge mystery to me. Because I really like this series so far. And I really like X-Men overall. But I will say, it does feel empty without Professor X. Because even though he's a very important role, he's never been, like, the main character in the X-Men series. At least the stuff that I've seen. He's always been, like, that mentorship role that kind of mentors everybody. But him not being there kind of leaves a hole in the overall, like, franchise for me, at least. And like I've said, I didn't watch the original X-Men 97, so I don't even know, like, is it possible he's going to come back? Like, 
is he actually dead? I didn't see him die. So, like, maybe he didn't actually die or maybe there's some way he could potentially come back in this universe. I don't really know. So, y'all are going to have to let me know that. But since we're talking about Professor X and, like, the gap he left, I'm going to tell y'all right now. I wasn't expecting Magneto to be the one to fill that gap. I've seen a lot of renditions of Magneto over the years, but this is by far my favorite one. The amount of growth and character that he has in this series is such a 180 to what I've always seen from him. Magneto and Charles have always wanted the same thing, but their ideals push them in different directions. And even though Magneto wants what Charles wants, he loves Charles, his ideals were always more important. He always had to put his mission above everything else. He wanted the mutants to be free and this was the path he saw, so he had to take it. I like how in this story, his love and respect for Charles has overwhelmed his past ideals, and he's going to do his best to respect Charles's wishes, regardless of if it goes against what he really wants. It's cool seeing him like this because it's so different, but it's also fire. Like, it's dope seeing Magneto work with the team and being a, like, a good guy, even being the leader of the X-Men is just so crazy to me. I don't know. I love it, though. I think it's absolutely fantastic, and it's a cool spin that I haven't seen. But what comes with that to me is now I'm wondering, he's Magneto. I feel like at some point, he's going to have to go back to his old ways. He's just going to have to. That's what Magneto does. So how long will he be rocking with the X-Men? And when he does switch back into old Magneto, you know what I'm saying, doing what he used to do, how is that going to happen? Why is it going to happen? I'm very excited to see that whole thing. Also, I'm confused about Magneto and Rogue's relationship because clearly they have a past that none of the X-Men know about. I don't know about it. And I'm wondering, do y'all know about it? Like as people who have watched the original X-Men 97, do y'all know about Rogue and Magneto's past relationship in this series? Because I don't. And I'm confused what's going on here. Like, I'm not going to lie. He was wilding out a little bit when he was touching her without her gloves. And I I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. Personally, I'm going to be real. I don't even really like it. Like, she like kind of like a teen girl and he's an old man. I don't know. Look, I'm not here to judge nobody, but it just does seem a little weird. I mean, she's probably not a teen in this series. I'm just saying from the X-Men that I watch, Rogue has always been a teenager. Actually, let me look up how old she is in this X-Men 97 series. Okay, it says here that X-Men 97 Rogue is like easily in her 20s. So that makes a lot more sense because I feel like in every other series, Rogue's normally like 15, 16. So it was a little weird to me, but this makes a little bit more sense. Still a, a big gap, but you know, it makes more sense. But back to Magneto, that scene where they took Storm's powers away and he made that bubble and took all of them all the way up into space. I thought he was about to fuck them up. I thought he was about to destroy them, but he took them up there to give them a speech about, yo, I'm really trying to make a change. I'm trying to make this world a better place how my boy Charles wanted to. Don't make me let him down. And that shows Magneto still got that dog in him. He like, yo, I'm playing by y'all rules. I'm doing what Charles wanted. But if y'all keep pushing me, that old Magneto go come back. So y'all gonna have to fix up so I don't get cracking. But that whole scene was fire. And I also think that these two episodes have done a very good job of showing off just how fucking powerful these mutants are. Like they really showing off what it means to be an Omega level mutant storm. Oh my God. Look, y'all know me. Y'all know I fuck with storm. If it wasn't fucking obvious to you, y'all know I rock with storm. That shit was so cool. Like, they gave her her just due and they gave her the utmost respect with how fucking powerful she is and what it means for her to be Omega because she was throwing it down. <sighs> Speaking of which, her losing her powers hurt me a lot. That scene made me emotional when she was talking about how she couldn't feel the breeze, how she just was so, oh my God, that shit hurt my soul so bad. When the thunder hit, and she flinched? Y'all can't tell me that didn't hit y'all soul. I know that had to have hit y'all soul. Because, like, imagine having these powers that, for part of your life, was almost like a curse. Coming to terms with it, accepting it for what it is, and just having that be a full part of yourself. And then losing it. Not even losing it, but having it ripped away from you, like, against your will. It's like... 
damn, bro, because the weather really means shit to her. Like, that's like her her kids almost. You know what I'm saying? So ripping that away, that shit hurt. That shit hurt. They literally took a part of her against her will, and it fucked her up bad, and it fucked me up bad seeing it. I, I didn't like that at all, but I do think that that's like, that's one thing that this story has been doing very well is just making me feel emotions. I didn't know this shit was so emotional. I was expecting just a cool superhero story, but it's talking about relationships when it comes down to like Scott and Gene. It's talking about friendships when it comes down to Xavier and Magneto losing your powers, coming to grips with yourself, all types of shit. So it's like, damn, this this shit is intense. I'm fucking with it, though. I'm fucking with it, though. I hate what they did to Storm, but I also like what they did to Storm, so I'm going to just have to respect it. All right, now let me talk about some things that I just literally have no background knowledge on because I never watched the original X-Men 97. I don't know who the fuck Jubilee is, and I don't know who the fuck Morph is. Morph, his powers seem rather obvious. It seems like he can just turn into people and things um similar to Mystique, but I think Morph can turn into, like, animals and stuff as well. Jubilee... She explodes, I think. It looked like she can make, like, little bombs. I don't know what the fuck she does. It's, she seems similar to Gambit. I don't know. Speaking of which, I never watched the original X-Men 97 series. I feel like every other time I've seen Gambit, he's been wearing regular street clothes. So to see him in that rocker vibe just kind of threw me off a little bit. I wasn't... I don't know. The drip was interesting. I am definitely enjoying this series, even though it's only been two of the new episodes, I mean, the old episodes, I don't even know how many old episodes there are, but there's only been two episodes of the new one, and I think it's pretty cool, I'm enjoying it, I'm definitely gonna keep up with it, I was a little reluctant to tune into this at first, because the animation seemed kind of stiff, because I didn't know that this was a continuation of a past series, so I was just like, man, it looks very stiff and old, but that's kind of what they were trying to do, they're trying to keep it in line with what it used to be so it has the old school style with the more modern animation so it looks pretty good for what they're trying to do i like it a lot i think it looks good everything's been cool i don't have any huge complaints i think it's cool i'm gonna keep watching it y'all let me know if i really have to watch the x-men 97 series before this i would rather not if i don't have to but if y'all really want me to i will y'all know what i'm saying i'm a man of the people but also let me know what other videos you guys want to see because i'm gonna keep making videos i got a bunch of videos dropping in the month of april by the end of april i am going to be a youtube partner so whatever y'all want to see is what i'm gonna make i decided that once i hit youtube partner i'm gonna make a video of me ranking Every single Ben 10 alien is going to be tough. It is going to be stressful, but I think it's going to be a lot of fucking fun. So I'll make it once we hit YouTube partner. So help me get to partner and we'll be good. But all right, y'all make sure y'all like, share, comment, subscribe. Let's hit to that like goal. We trying to hit 50 likes. I will catch you guys in the next video. I'm out. Peace.